my name is Kate. And I'm Sam. And this is our shuttle bus named Bessie. And our motorcycle Bruno. Let's go inside and check it out. This is the living and kitchen area over here. One of the things that was most important to us when we were building this was uh, to have a usable kitchen that we could cook really cool, elaborate things because both Sam and I absolutely love cooking. We spent a lot of room with counter space is important, storage is important, storage for your pots, pans, and all that stuff is also really important, but also, you want a big refrigerator. This refrigerator is the largest one they had um, and it opens from the top. It's a chest style, so it's very, very efficient. Runs off of our solar. Um, we have two areas. We can change the temperature in either or both. We have it set to be a refrigerator and a freezer at the moment, but if we needed to, we could have two freezers or two refrigerators. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we have here a Dometic um, three burner stove and oven. The oven was really important to me because I really like to bake stuff and roast vegetables. The um, storage underneath the oven and stove area is tons of pots and pans. It's a big drawer. All of our, you know, olive oil, pepper grinder, um, fish sauce. This is, believe it or not, one of the things we cook with the most. And the sink here, I wanted a nice deep sink um, with plenty of room to wash vegetables, do dishes, because when you're trying to do dishes in a very crammed space, water flies everywhere and it's just kind of like the worst. Dishes aren't fun regardless. I don't know anybody who loves doing dishes in the bus and if anyone has figured that out let me know. <laughs> Underneath the sink, we have our trash can. We have a gray water storage area. Over here, more storage. Uh, this top drawer is our silverware and, you know, spatulas, scissors, spoons, all of that good stuff. Right here are cups and plates and bowls. Um, have a couple wine glasses, some more ball jars, and coffee mugs. This one, um, I have tea, coffee, one of our pots that doesn't fit other places, <laughs> um, and then a ton of Tupperware and um, measuring cups, little tiny things like that. This is our water heater. Um, which works on demand, so it sets up, our, it connects to our propane tank that's underneath the bed, um, and you can have hot water, it just takes a couple seconds, and then the propane heats the water as it goes through, and it gets pretty hot, so you have to be careful not to burn yourself. <laughs> this right here is our spice cabinet. Um, tons and tons of different spices, we kind of accumulate a bunch of stuff too, so. This cabinet right here is just extra pantry storage, so peanut butter, panko, roasted bell peppers, things like that. <laughs> and then our couch here is really nice. You can lounge if you'd like. Um, it's long enough that if we have a guest, someone can sleep in it um, if you move these pillows. And like everything else, underneath it is more storage. So we have under here, um, towels, board games, extra baking, teas, and <laughs> there's food everywhere. <laughs> Nowhere in this bus is there not food. Um, and then this side is kind of our electronics. So on the top here, we've got, there's like any camera equipment or anything like that, uh, GoPro, fancy like, you know, diving flashlights. And then underneath all of that is the electronic setup where it um, sets up to our solar. Living in a bus is definitely different than backpacking internationally. There's a lot of things, um, pros and cons to each, I would say. When we first moved into the bus, there was a really big learning curve or mm -hmm. adjustment period, I think, because things that are usually easy that you take for granted when you live in an apartment or a house, so running water forever, 
a shower that you know exactly where it's going to come from and yeah. how often you can take a shower. Um, you know, plumbing. <laughs> not, not having to clean up a composting toilet, for instance. Yeah. Um, dishes are a pain. The first time we went camping, we thought used so much water. We, like one dinner, we used like seven gallons, and now we're down to maybe a half a gallon to wash dishes. So it's yeah. like learning all that was yeah. a difficult thing to get into. But yeah. but also figuring out what um, where you can stay. So. Yeah. When we first started going, it can be very stressful sometimes if you don't have a plan. Um, but the bad side about making a plan is things come up and plans always change. Or you meet really amazing people and you want to hang out with them. And if you've made this itinerary that you don't have a lot of room to budge or you have reservations at this place, then you miss, I think, a lot of the experiences that yep, are big time. the most special to me about living in a bus. So this is our bedroom. This is where we uh, sleep and whatnot. And uh, right next to it, which was convenient, we put our whole electrical panel. It's uh, controlling our whole battery system, which does all of our lights inside, um, runs the water pump, runs our fans, runs the lights, the heater, everything's through our panel. And it's all based off our solar. And we have 600 watts of solar on the roof. And it has been going for two years solid and we've never had any issue with power because it runs the fridge and everything. And we also hooked it up to a DC to DC charger, which, so if we are getting low on power, we can turn the engine on or drive, which will also help charge our house batteries. So we have two 200 amp hour Renogy batteries. They're two giant AGM batteries. Um, they're super heavy, but they were a good price at the time. If we were to ever swap it out, probably go for lithiums because they've become much more affordable, but it's been working great for us. So we have a um, nice mattress here. It's a six inch thick, uh, full queen size uh, bed made of memory foam um, been super comfortable it's not as thick as like a mattress at home but i find no difference compared to you know a 15 inch mattress when we go visit my parents or something so it's been a great bed and it, it's not super thick doesn't make it you know sit too high it's nice we uh we can open these doors to let cold air in if it's a hot night and we got the fans and the roof vent so it's pretty comfortable and we, we don't suffer too much with heat. We have this emergency hatch which came with the bus and we just had to pretty much take it out when we put up our wood ceiling and then put the, the framing back in for it. It's really nice to have because I can get easy access up to my solar panels. I can pop this thing fully open and get up there to clean them off or make sure the connections are good or whatnot. Uh, so we did our um, ceiling out of just it's uh, pine strapping, super rough wood, really kind of you know gnarly wood not super nice looking but we spend we spent maybe five or six days every day for hours and hours and hours sanding and making them look nice and then we uh put varnish on them and whatnot and it turned out really great and we we love it it's one of our favorite things about the bus so um under our bed is our garage and it's just a ton of room and we built this uh nice big hatch here to access it and we can get in and see, you know, get all of our food, which you keep in bins, and you always just need to store more stuff. There's always more things you carry in here and have to shove in the back of the bus. So at the, uh, the foot of the bed, we built this kind of little open cabinet, um, really handy for all of our clothes and whatnot. It's basically our entire closet, all of our clothes are there. It's nice, it's above the bed, so our feet are under it, so we're not kicking it. It's not a ton of space, but it's, it's perfectly enough for the amount of clothes we use. We kept the AC in because it just really helps cool down the bus. The AC that's in the uh, dashboard of the bus is just super small and does not cool off the space. And if we're driving through hot areas or it's a hot sunny day on the highway, this bus heats up like a sauna. So with this AC still installed, we can really drive comfortably if we're driving down the interstate or driving through a really hot area. culture I think teaches us to accumulate stuff like oh you need to have the next best thing or this new fashionable dress or this new thing and it, it turns into this 
rat race almost where yeah. you're comparing yourself to other people and like oh do I have the newest best gadget for whatever and at least when we were living in Boston and mm -hmm. we had a house we just accumulated a bunch of crap so much stuff and it ties you down and it actually feels really bad because it's cluttery it's just um, it's exhausting to have to clean everything mm -hmm. and um, you have these closets that are just full of stuff and you don't even know what it is it's just like stuff and so when we were getting ready to leave on our internet our like really big international trip at first it you kind of have this weird attachment to things because it feels sad like oh I used this well, one I bought time. this shirt 10 years ago but I don't ever wear it like yeah and, and you but then you kind of move through that discomfort and then you start realizing like oh I don't need any of this none Just of this donate it all yeah none of this is important none of this adds to my life and then when everything was gone and all we had left were backpacks yep. it felt so good welcome to the front of our bus uh, this is our entryway. One of my favorite things that Sam did when we were building this was um, he bought a little key fob online and hooked up the hydraulic doors to this little key fob so I can close and open the doors with the click of a button, which is extremely convenient. Generally, I hang my keys there. It's nice because otherwise I would definitely lose them. <laughs> this front area is storage and it's mostly Ziploc stuff. We have um, screens and then this right here is uh, just Reflectix uh, that we put over our windows at night for um, both insulation and privacy. Right here is our bathroom. It's hidden in this little kitchen cabinet. So um, you can pop the top open and it's totally hidden. It's nice to have uh, especially if you're in the middle of the woods for a while. We have the Nature's Head composting toilet. We do try not to use it whenever possible because at the end of the day, it is a project that we do have to clean out. But <laughs> uh, I think like any sort of bus life, there's chores that are fun and chores that are just, you have to do them. And they're not so fun, but necessary. This is the only mirror that we have in the entire bus. <laughs> this came uh, at the very front, the bus driver, so he could like kind of see everybody, but we just mounted it up here so I can pop that open if I need a nice little mirror. It is extremely important to have as much storage as you possibly can. So we've got cabinets up here. Um, we tried to make them as small as possible when we were designing the space because we wanted this small space to feel as large as possible. So as soon as you have big cabinets coming in and taking up your field of view, it feels like a much smaller space. So we kept them far back and up. Um, this is pretty much just our medicine cabinet. We throw some extra dish towels and stuff right here. And this one over here is toiletries, um, toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, all that stuff. In 2018, we were both managing restaurants in Boston. We were, generally it was okay, but it just kind of it became a lot. Kate was working 80 hours a week. I was working all the time. And even if I was a day off, there's still, there's always something you have to go in and deal with, which was kind of a pain. So we just had a breaking point one day and we ended up quitting our jobs and decided we we're gonna go travel the world. So we bought a one-way ticket to Europe and just went and traveled internationally for a year and almost a, half. a year and a half. We were in Asia for about a year, just backpacking through different countries. We'd spend generally about a, at least a month in every country that we went to if we could. And um, then we were in Sri Lanka when COVID really happened in March 2020 when everything shut down very quickly. So we kind of had this idea that we would try to travel as long as we could um, until our finances ran out and we had to go home very quickly 
from Sri Lanka. We weren't planning. It was a, it was a big deal. We had to buy a ticket very quickly. Um, and we flew out like the next day. It mm, was yeah. There was no warning or really closure for our big trip. All of a sudden, it was like bam, you're home. Back home. Boom. And so, uh, thankfully, my mom lives on a farm in North Carolina. So we called her up because we had sold everything. We didn't have a house. We didn't have literally like anything, and we weren't planning on coming back to the United States anytime soon. Yeah. And so I called my mom. I was like, Mom. Can we come live with you for a little while? And so we, in March 2020, um, flew back home to North Carolina, lived on the farm with her and my stepdad. Mm -hmm. And um, we were there for about three months, but... Um, but we still had the itch. We're like, yeah. we still want to travel and we haven't seen the States. We haven't been around the United States at all. We've seen very little. So we decided, I mean, obviously going back into restaurant industry and you know, March 2020 was not a great idea, so... Or it wasn't an option. Yeah, it wasn't an option. So we looked online, researched for a while, we looked at some vans and whatnot, and then we found the shuttle bus at a North Carolina State Auction, and it was great, high ceilings, I could stand inside, um, lots of space, and we decided, let's go for it, and we bid, and we won, so... Yeah. So we bought this bus in North Carolina and it was uh, kind of an old folks bus. So it came with a wheelchair lift and that's why we got these nice doors on the side. And we got rid of the wheelchair because we wanted to be able to get more access and it was just this huge piece of metal here. But it's really nice having these doors. We get really good airflow up here for sleeping in bed and super good access to our garage, which we have, as you see, a ton of stuff under here. We got our diesel heater here, which really really heats up the whole cab pretty well and the controls right next to the bed so we can turn that thing on from bed and just warm it up before getting out and making coffee and everything which is super nice and this is our uh, tank for the diesel heater it's just a little 10 liter diesel tank and these are this is one of our batteries here you can see two of those giant guys and just tons of storage we have even some bins underneath the bed here that cinch up in the roof for more seasonal stuff so if it's the winter we'll put our cold or hot weather things in there or vice versa. Yeah, one of the nice things about this bus is that it's got, you know, all the storage and whatnot, but it also has the double access. On the side here, there's another door, which is really great to access the back, but when we have the motorcycle on the back of the bus, it's a huge pain to take the bike off to open that door. So instead we have these doors which we can access everything under the garage really easily. The back of the bus we decided to start decorating with stickers of uh, mostly national parks, but generally just each state, grab something from each state that looked cool and throw it in the back of the bus. We have a whole bunch more that I'm just backlogged with, but you know, it's nice to look at the back and see all the different cool places we've been, which is nice. And this is the other entrance to the garage, which has been super handy. Can't really access it with the motorcycles on, but generally if we're camped somewhere for a few days, we can uh, have this really accessible and grab what we want. So one thing we have back here is we have a hookup for a shower. So if we have a full water tank and we're in the woods and we want to have a shower, we can hook up our shower here and take a shower, which is really handy. This is full of all of our hiking gear. Uh, Kate and I really like backpacking. So we have a whole bunch of tents and sleeping bags and everything we need to get out and, you know, get away from home for a bit and go out into the back country and get some, uh, some good hiking in, which is always really nice. We also have our motorcycle helmets and uh, jackets and stuff back here. And over on the left, which you can't really see, is our uh, propane tank, which is in a sealed box. So if it does off gas, it just off gases outside, but it's um, nice and contained back there and won't budge around or anything. So underneath all this stuff, we have a 30 gallon water tank, which is plenty of water for being out in the wilderness for like a week. and. We built a, uh, a little fill up on the side of the bus there that lets us easily fill it up with the motorcycle still on so we don't have to take the bike off to fill our water tank, which is nice. Inside, there's a, a little window that lets us see approximately what level the water tank's at. So we've been on the road for about two years and the first year we had a really great time just having the bus, driving around and seeing the country, but it was always kind of getting a pain if we want to go anywhere, get some more groceries or just drive down the road and have a hike a mile. It's always a whole thing to pack up the bus, get it road ready to be able to go out and see stuff. So this January we went out and we bought a motorcycle. 
And this is a Royal Enfield Himalayan, and it has been probably one of the best things we've done to the bus. We've ridden this thing more than 5,000 miles already this year, and it brings us everywhere. It's good on-road, off-road, super fun to just go for a ride on. We can go into town, get groceries. We can park it anywhere. You go into a national park, it's hard to park a bus. So this thing parks anywhere. It's just been one of the best purchases we've ever made, I feel. Gets 70 miles per gallon compared to the 10 miles per gallon the bus gets. So it's just awesome. We love it. We both met at a restaurant where we like were working together and then we moved into an apartment together and you know so we were at work all day together and then at home all day together so we were like around each other all the time and then when we started traveling internationally we were you know either crammed in a tiny bus in Asia right next to each other or in a you know a little hostel room so we are so good at just being in the same room because we've we've been doing it for so long it's been like yeah eight years now of either working together and living together or just traveling in a small space all the time and yeah i mean we we have our own kind of space like sometimes she'll watch a movie in the bed and i'll watch a movie on the couch or i'll go up for a walk or a hike or a motorcycle ride but generally mm -hmm. we just we're together all the time <laughs> Yeah, and I think the motorcycle helps a lot too because um, sometimes we don't necessarily want to do the same thing every mm -hmm. single day. So if I'm feeling exhausted and I just need a turn my brain off day, I can just hang out in the bus and have my own space because um, alone time is important and you do need like time away or to yourself um, just to deal with, at least for me personally, I'm an introvert I think yeah. at heart. And so that's how I recharge. So and it, I can just grab on the bike and go into town or go yeah. for a hike or whatever, which is really yeah. nice. And Sam is much more go, go, go. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And yep. I am not necessarily like that all the time. So it's nice to be able to have two vehicles too. But even yep. before we had two vehicles, we we could figure it out. And we're good mm. at we're good at communicating. Like, hey, I need some alone time. This is a small space and. And I need some me time, and, mm -hmm. and neither one of us is ever offended when the other one says that because it really is very important, and you have to get to the point where you listen to your partner and really hear what they're saying, and it's not an offensive thing for me to say, look, Sam, I love you, but I need some time. And he's like, okay, I get it. Let's just, uh, yep. let's go on a, I'm just gonna go on a walk. And, and so I think that's, that's really important too. <laughs> yeah, big time. Thank you for coming along on our tiny home tour. We really enjoyed having you. If you would like to follow along on our journey, we are Shuttle Bus Bessie on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just all one word, um, lowercase, and Bessie is B-E-S-S-I-E. We would love to see you on the road someday if you ever yeah, see we'll us. See you on the um, dusty road. Yeah, come say hi, knock on our door. We're always welcoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love new friends. We love meeting people. That's what our favorite thing I think about. Yeah, the this. community is just yeah, killer. yeah, yeah, and and so good. New people are awesome. So we'd love to see you one day. But it is time for some alone time. <laughs> So, um, I'm gonna go relax. See you later. <laughs>